So the restaurant industry, industry is a very packed and competitive industry. There's tons of options for many consumers, such as Subway and McDonald's. And in the industry, uh, the, all the incumbents have a very difficult time to compete. So with that in mind, it's a very crowded competitive industry. And Taco Bell is a very good competitor, but they don't really know how they're going to drive their growth and how they're going to continue to stay uh, competitive within the industry. And so my recommendation for Taco Bell is to implement a breakfast menu so that they can become, remain competitive and outperform the rest of their users. So when I, looking at making this decision, I made three main decisions, uh, decision criteria for this, are that it's gonna drive the company growth, that it's gonna ensure brand consistency, and that it's gonna provide value to their stakeholders. So these are the three main pillars that I looked at when I wanted to make sure that this is going to actually be a good thing for Talk About to do. And so start off with the driving company growth. So breakfast accounted for 12.5 billion visits in 2013, which is 21% of restaurant visits, visits uh, total. So the main thing that restaurants really want to do when they want to become competitive is that they want to just drive traffic within the doors. So for Taco Bell, breakfast is a very good opportunity because this is going to help them drive a lot of traffic. Almost a quarter of all restaurant traffic goes into the bre uh, breakfast time. And of course, if we have more customers coming in the doors, they might start to see our product in a more valuable way. Um, not just the breakfast offerings, but if people are coming in the door, they might buy other things as well. They may start going to talk about more for lunch, etc. So this is a very key point where this is going to help grow the company because there's going to be a lot more consumers coming into the stores. And it's also going to increase their sales. So through the case, um, $70,000 was predicted to be in breakfast sales in, uh, per year at like a franchise, um, which is an increase in a, of about 19.3%, um, which is a huge increase going from 2012 to 2013. Um, I made a graph here, as we can see, um, it's pretty steady, like around 9.8% was the average growth in sales from year to year from 2010 to 2012. But if Talk About decides to implement breakfast, as we can see, at a 19.3%, percent growth rate is very high and there's a huge spike in sales by doing this and this is just going to help again drive that company growth and help talk about remain competitive in the industry so moving forward um, implementing breakfast will also help ensure brand consistency for talk about so one of their main slogans of the of yum corporation is that they want to be the defining global company who feeds the world so as we all know breakfast is the most important meal of the day and if Talk about wants to deliver on the brand promise of feeding the world, they need to actually offer breakfast. This is the most important meal for consumers. And if Talk about wants to feed the world, they can't do that without implementing breakfast. So this is a key step in ensuring that they're going to deliver on that brand promise. As well, Talk about um, considers itself an edgy 20 something brand, and offering breakfast is a very important factor for this. Um, as just anecdotally, I'm, a I'm almost a 20-year-old male myself, uh, which is the target consumer for Talk About. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I like to go out a lot, um, and then I'm a busy guy as well. Um, and I think having a breakfast option at a place like Talk About, where I'm the target consumer, would be very helpful. Um, when I get up in the morning, I got to get something quick to eat. Something that I would look for would be something like Talk About. And since this is the target consumer, it's a very good way to keep delivering on their brand promise and maintaining a consistent image as a and then moving forward um, as well, Taco Bell needs to provide value to their stakeholders. So the three key stakeholders, I guess, of Taco Bell are their franchisees, their customers, and then obviously their shareholders. So the first one, first off, to de deliver value to the franchisees, this is going to help increase their sales by implementing breakfast. Um, it's going to, it's forecasted to bring in $70,000 a year in sales or about $192 a day, um, which is great for franchisees. They're going to be seeing a lot more money coming into the business, a lot more um, a lot more revenue and a lot more people coming into the restaurant and as a result this is going to help um, drive profitability for the business and it's going to make people want to be franchisees um, and ensure that commitment from their employees. For customers, um, people uh, see Taco Bell as a cheap, fast, delicious and messy breakfast or food option, sorry, and so by offering breakfast this is just going to continue to give the customers what they want, which is the cheap, fast food, 
um, but it's going to offer it to them at a different time, which is breakfast, and it's going to be very good for Taco Bell. And finally, um, Taco Bell's CEO states in the case that he wants to drive earning per share growth at 10% a year. Um, and so in order to do so, they need to continue to innovate and drive that growth. And so by implementing breakfast, they're going to be making more money. And as a result, they're going to be able to deliver to their shareholders that 10% growth in their earnings per share. So now moving forward and looking at how that Taco Bell should actually implement this. Um, as is already stated, they already have a line of products going, so that's great. They don't really need to do that. But what they do need to do is they need to start off by pitching this to the franchisees and working with the franchisees to ensure that this is going to be a good option and that they're going to be able to implement this way and most seamlessly as possible. Um, of course, without the um, commitment of the franchisees, they're not going to be able to actually implement this effectively um, because the franchisees can say no to doing this. So they're really going to want to work with the franchisees to ensure that they're doing um, rolling this out in the best way as possible um, and ensuring that it's going to actually um, deliver uh, to the consumers what they want. Um, and then when, once that's done, they should look to launch a marketing campaign um, using social media outlets and television outlets, as they already do. Um, I thought the slogan could be for this campaign would be, Answer the Bell with Taco Bell Breakfast. Um, it's kind of a simple slogan. Obviously, it goes on uh, kind of a play on words with their name, Taco Bell. Um, but it kind of gives you the sense of, I'm going to wake up and attack the day, and I'm going to get Taco Bell Breakfast to help me do this, which is going to be something that will help... Um, because the target consumers are obviously 20-something people who are ambitious. A lot of them are probably students or young professionals. And so this is going to help occupy a place in their mind that Taco Bell is going to help them reach their goals. And then finally, um, after a few years, more of a long-term implementation plan, but they should look to imp or, um, expand the product offering. Uh, so Taco Bell does a good job of this now. They always change up their products. They offer limited edition products. Um, and so to continue the success of this breakfast line, they should look to kind of expand the product offering, offer new twists on what they are uh, planning on putting out so that customers are going to keep being interested in getting breakfast at Taco Bell. And then finally, some of the risks that come along with this. Um, the first one is the lack of franchisee support. So as previously mentioned, if the franchisees don't actually want to roll out um, what Taco Bell suggests, they don't actually have to. So in order to effectively address this, Taco Bell needs to convince the owners of the benefits. Um, as previously mentioned, they're going to be making a predicted about $70,000 a year in sales if they decide to go with breakfast. Um, and so that's a big way so that they can convince the franchisees to actually put this in their stores. As well, just talking and working with them to gain their commitment is going to be really key for Taco Bell. Um, Another potential risk of this is customer perceptions. So since obviously it's like a Tex-Mex style restaurant, um, customers don't really have the sense of Mexican food for breakfast. So instead of marketing it as that, I think Taco Bell should look to market it more as breakfast food, um, not Mexican food, so that the customers will be convinced that I'm getting breakfast at Taco Bell, not that I'm going to get Mexican for breakfast. And finally, um, since the industry is so competitive and since so many restaurants are actually deciding to do breakfast, um, there's a lot of advertising required to remain competitive. Um, and so in order to actually effectively do this, um, Talk About should look to innovate their product as well as their marketing campaigns. So um, what this will do is if they continue to innovate their products, this is going to give them stuff to market um, and put in their marketing materials so that they're going to continue to bring consumers to the stores. And finally, as long as they're changing up their marketing, um, this will help the long haul of like the long marketing run for them. So in conclusion, this is a very competitive industry. Taco Bell is looking to grow, maintain their competitive advantage within the industry. And in order to do this, instead of changing up their additional product offering, I believe the best option for them is to implement breakfast because it provides value to all of their stakeholders. It's going to help them drive growth, and it's going to ensure their brand. So in order for Taco Bell to do this, they need to answer the bell with Taco Bell breakfast. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Excellent presentation. Um, I guess we'll jump into some questions. Um, do you want to go first? Sure. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you stated that you want to specifically market the product as a breakfast focus kind of menu. Yes. So this puts you in direct competition with very established fast food places who already have breakfast menus like a McDonald's or a Burger King. 
how do you think Taco Bell can differentiate themselves by marketing through just a breakfast-focused menu? Okay. Um, so what Taco Bell offers now and what their kind of their key value proposition is is that it's a very cheap, affordable um, dining option for consumers. So uh, I think what they should focus on doing is all is trying to deliver that uh, message to their consumers in their marketing. Mm-hmm. They should deliver the, the message that, yes, we have breakfast food just like everyone else, but it's our option is probably going to be cheaper because consumers might not necessarily, as I said, want to go for Mexican breakfast food since a lot of consumers don't really know that. But if they market it as maybe a cheaper breakfast option rather than the um, existing competition, then I think that will help them often by replacing the consumer in the end. Okay. Um, just building on that a little bit. So you said that, again, because they're not necessarily Mexican food for breakfast, you market Mexican food as breakfast food. What does that look like in practice? Like, what, what do these advertising pitches show? Um, or what platforms would people be searching on? Um, so I think social media would be the first kind of, like, platform. Um, and I think what, what they would want to show is, again, uh, going back, they had the, their kind of, like, a messy, kind of delicious, but cheap and fast food option. So I think they really want to focus and center in on that core value that their food already offers, um, because customers already know that their food offers that, um, and really hone in on that um, in those in those advertising materials. Um, so again, since they're marketing twenty fields um, single menu, kind of their target market, their social media is going to be a really big one. Um, also, television uh, they is their kind of their traditional marketing. What they do now, mm-hmm. like you said, about seventy percent of their marketing is online. Mm-hmm. So just focusing and uh, ensuring that those advertisements are in good spots for um, those consumers again. So like games and stuff but again um, getting back to the, what they're going to show is that again it's like it's a messy kind of I guess edgy is another word like kind of hip type of food option but again it's cheap and it's not necessarily Mexican food but it's a breakfast food that offers all of those values. So um, my next question relates to the franchising strategy yes. so as a franchiser if I add breakfast to my menu I have to be open a little bit earlier you know I'm paying for more salaries, I have to also like um, kind of retrain my employees to this yeah. new kind of like meal and everything. You said you want to convince the franchisers. Now, what is your pitch to them to really get them on board to push this out? Um, so I think the first uh, thing would be just again going back and showing them like the numbers, like how much money they can potentially make doing this. Um, that in the case that uh, that seventy thousand dollars includes you know the increase in wages and everything, so mm-hmm. like. That's not really something that they need to worry about. Um, but yeah, I, like you said, um, it's actually not going to require a lot of training either. Um, so basically what, what they're going to do is they're going to ship you the food items uh, pre-cooked and just going to be preheated, which okay. is what I understand what Taco already does. Okay. So it wouldn't require too, too much training for their employees. So I'd also pitch that to them that you know, to see the added, they could see these added benefits of you know, making more money. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, again, like it cost, doesn't require much extra training and Companies like McDonald's are making, you know, like a million dollars a day from Taco Bell before Taco Bell's even open yeah. just through their breakfast options. Um, and McDonald's now even offers all day breakfast, mm-hmm. which is becoming um, very popular. So to keep up with that, um, you need to convince the franchisees that, you know, if they want to they wanna keep owning their Taco Bell, they want their Taco Bell to be successful. This is kind of the next step that the business as a whole and the franchise needs to do. Yeah, that's changes look like after you convince the franchisees from from the franchisor's perspective? Uh, are they have you thought about who will be creating those marketing materials? Are you gonna have any tailored for different regions? Um, or is it gonna be very consistent branding across? Um, I think the branding should be consistent across this um, I think that's really important for um, a company just to make sure that they have that kind of wherever you go mm-hmm. um, across the world that getting the same Taco Bell experience all over the place. Um, but I think, yeah, it would start off, the United States market would probably be the first one. Obviously, um, it's very probably like the largest market that Taco Bell definitely has, and it would probably be easiest to implement these changes, um, as well as do a lot of testing of the market a little bit. But yeah, like I think the marketing materials and the menus that would go into the stores, for example, all the um, social media and the television advertising should 
able to remain consistent um, across regions within the United States. And then obviously um, after a while, if the product offering does have success, then expand it to the other markets. Canada would be a good one that uh, they have a lot of footprint in China as well. Um, so there you go. Um, so you had like some graphs with sales and you also yeah. spoke to like hitting EPS targets. Can you walk me through your logic as to how you generated that sales growth target or projection? Yeah, so um, I, they had the uh, financial statements from 2021 and 2012. Sure. So what I did was uh, I looked at the um, percent change in revenue because it's been growing. It had been growing every year from 2010 to 2011, so I don't actually have it with me, but I think it's right. 11%. So I averaged those out to be 9.8%. Um, so I predicted from 2012 to 2013 with this continuous growth, we would see the um, like 9.8% growth in revenue if they just continued operations as is. Okay. And then I took the number of, or the annual sales of $70,000 and then I multiplied that by the number of franchises in the US. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just added that number to what I had projected as the, the growth. Okay. So that's Okay, cool. Any more questions? Sure. No, I think that's it. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.